who shall prohibit or hedge in this course the wonderful the charioteer the swift he is supposed to be wonderful he is the charioteer who is guiding the course of all the movements all this progress is charioted by him he is the swift he will have to accomplish in no time just like that just like that just like that a traveler of a million roads of life he steps familiar with the lies of heaven trade without pain the sword paved course of hell there he descends to reach eternal joy so sword paved course of hell well this is true it is not only jagged hills rough hewn stone but what you have got here not only thorns but sword spikes of swords are there and you are walking on them so paved course of hell so paved of law that is my god of law that is my god of law there he descends to reach eternal joy love's golden wings have powers to fan thy void the eyes of love the star light of death and night the feet of love tread naked hardest pearls so you have got feet of love you have got wooden wings of love you got eyes of love you see he was talking of he was talking of only one thing god me so the metaphor continues savitri is answering very she is listening to what he is saying very word and corroborating her answer with what he, he has said also you see so that is the tightness of savitri spiritual poetry and therefore he says love's golden wings eyes of love feet of love do we have feet of love <laughs> well certainly you don't have feet of law he labors in the depths excels on the highs so he does not disdain depths he does not remain away aloof enjoying the heights he has both at his end he shall remake die universe oh death because he excels in depths he labors in depths he excels in height both the things are there he enjoys the majesty of those golden realms he knows that there is a work to be done in the depths and he enjoys that work and therefore he shall remake die universe of oh, death you have made this universe with the orbs of light and stars and all that he will remake them the stars what the stars you have made he will remake them with a different power of vision they will have vision they will see the depths of night the stars will see the depths of night with a divine vision why this night is there the profundity of night for the star to shine what for what is there present in this night it is that they will try to bring out they will see and bring out those stars it is that is how they will make a new world that was made by death she spoke and for a while no voice replied what can they be while still they travel through the trackless night and still that gleam with a pallid eye traveling the darkness which is doubt to gain so they are still moving 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 in the endless night the spirit of satyavan behind him the figure of death behind them savitri the procession moves on in the endless night then once more came a deep and perilous pause deep and perilous pause now he is taking a long breath to inflict honor 
weapon of argument. Use another one. In that unreal journey to blind not once more a thought, a word in the void arose and that made answer to the human soul. So it is Savitri who is speaking those things with all that wisdom of God, that human soul is in possession of that wisdom of God and it is with that she was answering to him. But now this God is replying back to Savitri. What is thy hope? To what dost thou aspire? I don't understand what are you up to. You are hoping something what for? You said he will remake this universe, my universe. What is your hope? What are you aiming at, dreaming at, you see? What is your hope? To what dost thou aspire? I have read this world and what do you else want from this world? This is the body, spirit is lovely. Your husband is away. You are no more in the physical company of your husband. And therefore, you are arguing this kind of things. You see. This is your vital passion. Give it up. Forget about all that. This is thy body, spirit is lure of a save, a pain, a frail, precarious form. To please for a few years the faltering sin. With honey, your physical longing and the heart's fire and a vain oneness seeking to embrace the brilliant adol of a fugitive hour. This is a passing hour, going away, coming away. You want to embrace that hour, but that will also disappear. This is your vital longing, this is your physical longing, this is your sensuous passion which wants your Satyavan back. What are you up to? Impossible. Forget about that. And thou, what art thou? Soul, the glorious dream. Where is your soul? There is nothing like your soul. It is your dream. It is your fiction. It is your imagination. It is your thought. Forget about that. Oh, brief emotions made and glittering of grief emotions made and glittering thought. He says it is made of glittering thought, of, of emotion. A thin dance of fireflies spreading to the night, a sparkling ferment in life's sunlit mire. So in the marshy land, you see the fireflies dancing and all that. Thing. It is that what you call soul. What kind of lady you are? You don't understand the small little things in the marshy land. Will thou claim immortality? O oh heart, crying against the eternal witnesses, that thou and he are endless powers and last. Are you really endless powers who live and live and live? Impossible. Forget. What kind of witnesses you are calling to assert that? Death only last and the inconscient void. That is all. Now at least this world is thankful that there is somebody else also who can last, not only he, who the inconscient void. He knows it because it is from that that he was born. He assumed a shape, a form. He came out of nothingness, out of that void to present himself as a person to confront Savitri was there now. And therefore he says in conscient void, I only am eternal and endure. Now I am eternal, I endure because I come from the inconscient void. As long as the inconscient void is there, I shall be there. I will endure. I will remain there always. I am the shape is formidable vast. I am the emptiness that men call space. I am a timeless nothingness carrying all. I am the illimitable, the mute alone. That is all I am. I am alone, that's all, nobody else. 
I am the illimitable. My power is boundless. It has no boundaries. It can stretch in every direction, everywhere. And yet, I am alone. I, death, am he. What you are calling supreme or whatever, it is I, of God. There is no other God. You are imagining some other God, but there is really no other God. That God, if it is there, who is that God? I. All from my deaths are born. They live by death. They live by death. So it is death who gives life to them. It is death who gives life to them. All my deaths return and are no more. All to my depths return and are no more. I have made a world by my inconscient force. It is true. What he says is true also. He is not making a wrong statement. My force is nature. My inconscient force. What is this force? Nature. Who creates and slays. The hearts that hope. So that is the nature of nature. One who creates and she slays that heart that hope. That is the nature of nature. The limbs that long to live. I have made man her instrument and slave. His body I have made my banquet. His life my food. I eat, I eat. Man has no other hell but only death. That is his assumption. Because he has no other knowledge or possibility in this world. Man has no other hell but only death. He comes to me at his end for rest and peace. But can there be peace even if he goes there? No, <laughs> no. I, death, I am the one refuge of thy soul. The gods to whom man pays can help not man. They are my imaginations and my moods reflected in him by illusions. Of. So who are these gods after all? Their reflection, their projection of illusions power. You are after them. Be merry. Run after them. They are not going to help you at all, finally. You see. <laughs> that which thou seest as thy immortal self is a shadowy icon of my infinite. You are talking of somebody who is immortal, undying, and all that thing. After all, what is that after all? It is a shadow of my creation, my image. It is that shadow what you are talking. Yeah. Is death indeed dreaming of eternity? It is that death which is dreaming of eternity in you. I am the immobile in which all things move. I am the new name in which they see. I have no body and no tongue to speak. I come in not with human eye and ear. Only that thought gave a figure to my void. It is to my void your thought has given this imagination. It is your creation, your mental notion of thing is not true at all. It means it is not true. Because, O oh, aspirant to divinity, thou caused me to wrestle with thy soul. I assumed a face, a form, a voice. Now, this is the real truth he has uttered. The rest was all the while bagatel. It was really bagatel, all the rest. But this is the real truth he is uttering. Something insignificant, something not worthwhile, bagatel. <laughs> but this is the real thing. Because, oh, aspirant. He recognizes that she is the aspirant to divinity. 
he recognizes. No, this is not Bhagatil. I am telling you, until now what he was talking was Bhagatil. Now the real thing which he is talking is in these three lines. <laughs> because, O oh, aspirant, you are the aspirant, he recognizes something of that in the soul of Savitri. Thou, it is because you have called me, I assumed a form to give a fight to you. Otherwise, I was happy in my void. I was lying there. I had need, there was no necessity, need for me to take a form and shape and present myself to you. Thou caused me to wrestle with thy soul. Now again he says, you see, very careful. I am not interested in your vital being, your mental being, your physical being, this thing, that thing, that thing, that thing. I am interested in your soul, in response to your soul. That is what matters to me. The rest is all of no consequence for me at all. Therefore, I had taken this form and I am presenting myself to you. Because, O Aspirant, to divinity, thou cause me. Did she call him? Did she call him? No. She didn't call him. <laughs> yeah, in the in the strictest logical sense, she didn't call him. Yet she wanted him to come. He had to come to face her, to meet her, to accept her challenge. It was absolutely necessary that they sort of meet physically, one against the other. She is there, he has to come. Otherwise, what is she going to fight with? In the air, you see. In the clouds, he has to come, you see. In that sense, she did call him. Come on, let's fight out. Let us see who wins the battle. Let us enter into the list of the spirit. In the, in the wrestling ground, in the pit of wrestle, arena. Let us enter there. And fight out the issue, we will win. You have called me, therefore I come. In this. I assume the face, a form, a voice. Otherwise, I have no face, I have no form, I have no voice, I don't speak. I am alone, void, alone. But if there were a being witnessing all, how should he help that passionate desire? You think somebody is going to help you? against me, if there is a being who is seeing all these things happening, how is he going to help you? I don't understand that. You are there, I am there, finished. He is not going to help you at all, you see. How should he help thy passion? Your passion for the return of such a one, that is a desire. Who can help it? Impossible. There is nobody to help you at all, you see. Hello, if he watches solely and absolute, indifferent to thy cry in nameless form. Indifferent to thy cry in nameless form. You see, on that fateful day, God's above and nature's soul below were the spectators of that mighty strife. That is what we have got in the second canto. God's above and nature's soul below were the spectators of that mighty strife. There is nobody else. The nature is all watching this man dying, this lady there sitting, Yama coming there and all that. Nature is watching and God's above helplessly. They are seeing the whole thing going on. So he says, Hello, if he watches. So, like that, he is there. God, if he is there, he is there watching. Hello, if he watches, soul and absolute, indifferent to the cry in nameless form. Actually, later on, he will say, he watches, he, here he says, he watches, because it is in the context of witnessing all. But, if there is a being, in the context of that being, he watches. Later on, death will tell Savitri, 
Look, Savitri. This early morning, before we came to the forest here, you got ready, prepared yourself. You went to the stone carved statue of Durga, statue carved by your husband, Satyavan. You offered worship to her. You offered worship, prayed for protection from her, that she be with her when she goes to the forest. This man is watching from above. I have seen all that thing. <laughs> Where is she now? He is asking. What happened to her? But here he watches. Speaking. Hello, he watches so and absolute indifferent to the cry in nameless calm. He is being his pure, unwounded, motionless one. Now he is a witness after all. Therefore, he is not affected by what is going around here. Witness is not affected. He watches all the things happening around here, the show. He is pure. He remains aloof from that view. He remains unwounded. He remains without any emotion, moveless. One, he remains for himself, you see. 